for a long time I've wanted to stand up and um, say something about this place, but I didn't know how to go around, like how to do it, because as I've said before, in England you haven't got much support for places like this in England, you know what I mean, like in America, from America. Um, especially when I found out that Rachel Kelso was still there. Oh, that really brought a tear to my eye. Like, Rachel, she was, she was, she was like in her own little bubble all the time. She's, so her smile, her big smile, she would rather like just go and play with the insects on the floor. Like she would like go and look in little ants and stuff and all the animals, she loves the animals. Um, she, she hasn't got a bad bone in her body. Like, I, the, honestly, the only times that she, when she would used to get in trouble, it wasn't any fault of her own. It was just natural instinct, human instinct, you know what I mean? Like looking at her sister or um, just not going fast enough or like just stupid little things that she was getting in trouble for. It was nothing like major. She just, and she used to get majorly picked on and used to work because she would, she would just get on and do stuff because she'd just be in her own little bubble, just doing it, picking up the weeds and stuff. You know what I mean? She was a lovely girl. And when I found out that she was still there, oh my God, it was like, I don't know, my, I got goosebumps. I, I just felt like, I felt like quite sick to the stomach that she, like she probably thinks that we've all abandoned her. You know what I mean? She probably thinks like all these people and she's still there and she's probably so confused. She doesn't know, she doesn't know. Like she, when she comes out into the outside world, she's not going to know how to cope. She's not going to. She's going to need a lot of support, really do. Cause she's when I stepped outside in the outside world, like Wi-Fi was available. I never heard of Wi-Fi in my life or like anything like that. And she's going to need a lot of support. And it's sad because they could have prevented this from happening and not sent her there. She didn't need to be sent there. She wasn't a rebellious teenager. None of the girls need to be sent there. You know what I mean? No one needs to be sent to that. It doesn't, we might be a rebellious teenagers, but we're only just pushing boundaries because that's what teenagers do. And being just put, just shoved to these places because you can't cope as a parent, it's just, it's, it's, I would never dream of doing that to my children. Let's just say that, I'd never do it. It's you've brought these children into this world or you've adopted these children to be put into your care for you to bring, to be brought up. You need to bring them up. You know what I mean? Not just go and throw them off because things are getting too hard. Yeah, I agree. Um, but what really scares me is when you talk about the support that she's going to need because she hasn't received any education or any life skills or any positive human experiences other than the ones that she had with you girls. Um, this part that's really fucking horrifying is right now, as it sits, it doesn't look like Rachel will ever leave Circle of Hope. And even if she were to leave Circle of Hope, she's probably just going to be transferred into another IFB, TTI, Void household or agape related program anyways for the rest oh, of her she's life. She's giving me goosebumps. She's been legally committed she's to them. She's giving me goosebumps when you talk about it. You know, boy, <clears throat> it's, but that, but that's enough of a motivator. And so I'm really glad. I know, I understand having to deal with the, does she think that we've left her and forgotten about her? And I think that the best thing that all of you can do is to prove that you haven't forgotten about her and that, you know, it's been 14 years that she's been in there. So whatever it takes at this point to make sure that she's in a safe, structured, you know, regulated group home or whatever, where she can have relationships and friends and contact with her sisters from Circle of Hope, really, you know, and a real yeah. life. Because I don't under how how is it acceptable that she's not allowed a real life? No, it's breaking my heart even when you talk about it. I've got a tear in my eye and everything. It's just uh, right, right. She's just such a she's such a lovely lovely girl. You know what I mean? And it's just it's just not fair for her to be put through all this. And if they send her to another school, it's just it's just what. But she needs some support, a nice family to live around. You know what I mean? Cause she, She'll be so good of her, like a family. She's, I can just see her now in the kitchen. She likes cooking and stuff. I could just see her now, you know what I mean? And the little family being happy. I could just, it should be so much happier in a place like nice little families live in, not another home, just fobbing her off to home to home because no one wants to deal with her. You know what I mean? It's not fair. It's not fair. It shouldn't happen. Especially when she's got mental no, health. Like no, no. She needs to be supported and stuff and not just fogged off personally 
I feel like people who are like Rachel should be considered a gift, you know, um, and something that we treasure and protect as opposed to this uh, thing that we want to hide away and treat as if it's yeah. a burden. This is, she, she definitely needs to get out of there and put into the right support.